Hello and welcome to Grace Lutheran Church Sermon Podcasts. On this podcast, you will hear the latest sermons taken from our weekly worship service. Our hope is that you will find joy and comfort in knowing the forgiveness of God through Jesus Christ. Jesus entered the temple courts. and While he was teaching, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things, they asked, and who gave you this authority? Jesus replied, I will also ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, where did it come from? Was it from heaven or of human origin? They discussed it among themselves and said, if we say heaven... He will ask, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the people, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we don't know. Then he said, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. As a child, I was asked, like most of you were, to do chores around the house. I was asked, and then I didn't do them. But as a child, I enjoyed watching my dad plant the garden, pick fruit from the tree, and mow the lawn with the cylinder blade push lawnmower that we had. Well, I studied how he mowed and collected the grass on the hottest days of summer. And although I neglected to do chores most of the time, One summer day, when I was around 10 or 11 years old, I decided to work in the yard and be like my father. My dad was at work in the, my dad, my my dad was at work and my mom was not home. Fancy that nowadays, right? I decided to help mow the lawn. I got the lawnmower out of the garage and started cutting back and forth across the front lawn, just like my dad did. Now, my mother was the one who used to tell the story, so she continued like this. She was coming home in the 1955 Buick Special, and as she drove up the driveway, she saw the lawn partially mowed in a zigzag fashion. Following the trail of mowed grass to the end, she found the lawnmower, but not me. She went into the house and found me. I had worked up a thirst and did what my dad always did when he was hot from work. I went into the basement refrigerator and got a can of old Milwaukee beer. (laughs) To her surprise, I drank two cans. I was smashed. And she called the doctor. He told her not to worry that it would wear off, but not to let me play outside especially around the little girls in the neighborhood. Well, in part, this illustration may serve to help understand our parable. Jesus told it a little differently, though. And the circumstances were different that lead up to it as well. To get a G- at Jesus' meaning of the kingdom, let's look at the context of his parable. Pharisees and the Sadducees were constantly at odds with each other. They were always trying to trap Jesus. Their questions were designed to make Jesus agree with them in some way or another to confirm their authority. 
Since Jesus had just cleaned the temple by overturning all the tables of the money changers and healing the sick and eating with prostitutes and tax collectors, they found these to be a worthy reason to question his authority. They asked Jesus, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? And Jesus answered them, I'll ask you a question. And if you tell me the answer, then I'll tell you by what authority I do these things. If they said Jesus' baptism was by God's authority, they should be obedient and believe John's message about Jesus when he said by the Jordan River, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is he of whom I said after me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. Now, on the other hand, the chief priests and elders knew that if they denied the authority of John the Baptist, they would have a riot on their hands because the people had accepted John as the coming of Elijah, the prophet proclaiming the coming of the Messiah. Now, the Jewish leaders find themselves trapped. They would rather reveal their unbelief and disdain for Jesus and the Father. Jesus' intention, however, was to call the Jewish leaders to repentance and believe that he was the Messiah as John had preached. But that did not happen here. So Jesus tries again, this time with a pointed parable about two children who were called to work in the vineyard. This parable is about God's judgment and about his mercy. The parable involves a vineyard. Like the one last week, the master has two children. Yes, it is translated children, not son. The word son shows a legal ownership or relationship, but the Greek word for child is used here, and that is an intimate relationship with the father. Israel is God's vineyard that he planted, watered, and cared for. All of Israel knew this. The Pharisees knew this. They know these images that Jesus is using. So the first child says, and I've got it backwards because in in Luke, the children are backwards. The first child says, yes, I'll go, but doesn't go and refuses to do the work. The second child is also asked to work as the child of the father. This child also refuses to go. This child also rebels against the father, refuses to live as his child. This child is no different from the first. Both children are the same. Only in that later, this child rethinks what it is to be the son or the daughter of the father. This child has a change of heart. This child has a change of mind. And then he goes and lives doing the Father's will. You wonder, what is Jesus getting at, asking two children to help in the vineyard? Why two? Both children belong to the Father, and both were to do what he asked of them, to work in his vineyard. None is more loved than the other child. Neither is one child superior to the other child. Neither does one have more responsibility than the other child. There are certainly more than two children in the vineyard of God, true, but there are only two types of children in the vineyard. The one who does the Father's will, the one who does not do the Father's will. They both are asked to live as the father's child. In effect, when asking both children, the father actually means, child, go and show yourself to the world today that you are my child by helping me in my vineyard. Do you remember the two cartoon characters named Goofus and Gallant? They were on the back cover of the Highlights magazine for children that we used to get. My sister and I would get this magazine every month. Goofus and Gallant remind me of the two children Jesus mentions in the parable. They were brothers. The magazine presents an identical situation and how Goofus responds and then how Gallant responds. They were eponyms of their behavior. Goofus was a goof. 
and disobedient. Gallant was a knight in shining armor, always behaving a proud parent would imagine. For example, Goofus turns on the television when there are guests. On the other hand, whenever guests arrive, Gallant turns off the television at once. Goofus continues watching TV when his uncle walks in the room. Gallant gets up to look his uncle in the eye and shake his hand. Of course, my sister and I would fight about which one of us was Goofus or Gallant. She always said I was Gallant. Nah. It's so easy for you to imagine yourself as Gallant. The child who hears the vineyard owner's voice obediently goes out to tend to the vineyard. But as you see in the parable, there is no third obedient child. Nobody. Nobody does the will of the father. Nobody goes immediately to work in the vineyard. Acting gallantly, you say, Lord, I will go and share your gospel with at least five people today. But then stay at home or watch TV or play on your iPad or do some gaming or you name it. There's always something better to do. There is always time to mow the lawn later. You know what I mean. You've done it before and you'll do it again. Yet as children of God, you and I are called to live your life treating others the way God has mercifully treated you as his child. You love being called a child of God, but would rather do without the responsibility of living as one. You struggle in your obedience to the Father in the kingdom, just like both children in the parable, don't you? You are stuck living your old life, doing the things you want, doing the things you desire, not what your father wants. At times, what you hear at church or read in scriptures goes in one ear and right out the other. You're told to go out into all the world, but you have trouble just going out into your own backyard. Somehow your old life, the things you've done, the pleasures you've desired, the comfortability you were accustomed to and still find joy in doing haunt you in your life as God's child because you know you want to do them. You find comfort in them. You'd rather do them than live as a child of God. And that's all of us. It's easy to become depressed and lose energy, even question if you are forgiven as past passions and sins weigh on you. Even Paul was a goofus. He says, the life I want to live, I don't. And when you look at your life as God's child, you might think to yourself, I sure don't feel that I live like God's child. But actually, if you feel that way, there's good news. Because feeling that way is what makes the second child return in repentance to the owner of the vineyard. To recognize that you have not lived as the child of the father who saved you from your sins, who gave you new life, convicts you and causes you to turn around in repentance. That is how the prostitutes and tax collectors enter the kingdom of God before the Jewish leaders in the conclusion of the parable. Though they once rebelled, they now heard John's call to repentance, believed, and grasped hold of the Messiah. Being made righteous, they can now live in the world merciful and forgiving to others. God the Father gathers in his arms All the children who repent to be his own through the life and resurrection, his only son, Jesus Christ. He makes you gallant. A child clothed in the righteousness of his son, loved by the father. You, children of the owner of the vineyard, you are a gallant. With repentant hearts and sins forgiven, you are loved to live a fruitful life of love in his vineyard, in this world. Living as his child, 
to cultivate the fruit of the Spirit, as Paul says in Galatians. Fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Your life in the vineyard is to show the same mercy, the same patience, the same gentleness that you were shown by him. Living joyfully with thanksgiving amid sadness. Promoting peace instead of bickering. That's what righteousness is. Cultivating your life as a child of God. Even a little boy who got drunk mowing his father's lawn can repent. Take out the lawnmower to help his father's vineyard. Though young, he still struggles living as God's child. (coughs) He has to turn around many times. Repentance is never a one-time event. It's part of your life in the vineyard. You too, you all struggle with past lives, cultivating your calling in life as God's children Yet his mercy is abundant, and it's new every day. John puts it this way in his first letter. If we say we do not bear the guilt of sin, we're deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, forgiving us our sins and cleansing us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. Then John says, my children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And he himself is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for our sins, but also for the whole world. You know, on second thought, there is, after all, a third child in the parable. This child is the only one who went to work in the vineyard when his father called. He's the only one who did his father's will. He never refused the father. He is Christ, the gallant. He did the father's work on your behalf. He fulfilled that work for you and in you. He was so obedient that he died at the hands of rebellious fellow workers in that same vineyard. And he is your advocate before the Father. He was raised to life to be your brother and to bring you into the kingdom. His spirit in you strengthens you in life. Follow and walk as Jesus did. Amen. To know more about Jesus and our ministry at Grace Lutheran Church, please find us at www.gracealoneonline.org. You'll find additional sermon podcasts and your favorite podcast channel every week at www.gracealoneonline.org forward slash sermons.